Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Panasonic GH5S 2.0 firmware that was released on June 9, 2021. So if you don't already have that installed into the GH5S, I'll link it below and you can do that. I'm also gonna talk about one glitch I found with the camera that's easily fixed in case you've encountered that. I'll timestamp it at the end of this video so you can check it out. But essentially, we're gonna test out this camera now with the improved AF. It also has some other upgrades, including a red ring around the recording screen, which is great. You can enable that through the settings. This video will primarily look at the autofocus performance of the camera with the 12 to 60 kit lens. I'm also gonna compare it up against the Panasonic S5 with the kit lens. And then we're also going to check it out with the Panasonic 12 millimeter f1.4 prime so i've done a number of different tests outside both in 10-bit vlog cine v and a whole bunch of other profiles and this will kind of give you a rough sort of look into what the difference is in terms of picture quality between the s5 and the panasonic gh5s with this kit lens once we go over to the prime you're going to see a huge difference here we go in this first test the gh5s actually outperformed the S5, so that was pretty surprising, and this was in Vlog and Vlog L. Now, the one downside, however, with the stock settings is the background pulsing was very evident with the Panasonic GH5S, where there was zero background pulsing or very minimal with the S5. So the S5 stock settings seem to be that little bit better, I'll put that in quotations, than the GH5S when it came to the background pulsing. Now when it came to this second test, when I just walked towards the edge of frame, the clear winner was the GH5S. I'm not sure what was going on with the S5 in this particular situation, but it didn't like the edge of frame whatsoever. So I'm gonna give the win to the GH5S. When it came to the sunglasses test, both of the cameras basically were even in terms of how quickly they found my face and whilst staying locked on. Again, the GH5S though has that background pulsing with these stock settings, whereas the S5 didn't. As I was walking away from the camera, the S5 seemed to struggle just that little bit more. Testing out both cameras at 50 millimeters, I gotta tell you, I think both cameras performed equally as well at finding a face and staying locked on. But again, the GH5S with these standard settings has that background pulsing, whereas the S5 doesn't. So this is the prime lens set to 1.4 in aperture priority mode. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of natural motion blur going on. But as I walk towards the camera here, it does a really great job at staying locked onto my face, which I really like. And there's not excessive background hunting or pulsing going on. It maintains focus on my face pretty well. There is minimal background movement right now, but not a lot. It's not enough to distract anyone if they're not looking for it. But again, moving backwards from the camera, that's where you'll find the Panasonic system struggles the most, whereas walking towards the camera it does a far better job. Now when it comes to autofocus performance and getting the best results, set your camera to the higher frame rate. So film at either 50 or 60 frames per second, depending on your location, and you'll definitely get the best results. This keeps up with you moving towards the camera really well, as long as you're not doing some of those run tests that you see people do. Now, if you film in that kind of way where people are running back and forth towards the camera, there's no way you would buy one of these cameras to begin with, but it's great to see that these higher frame rates give you far better results, and it's on display in this particular section. There's also far less background pulsing in the higher frame rates as well. So whether you're using one area mode or face detection autofocus, shoot in the higher frame rate and then strip it back in editing. At the start of the video, I mentioned that I had an issue with the firmware upgrade process and it was an easy fix. Thankfully, I reached out to Panasonic and 
I didn't really get any help from them, unfortunately. So as of shooting this, I worked out a fix and hopefully it's helpful for you. So after doing the upgrade, I noticed that any of the 12 or 15 millimeter lenses had excessive barrel distortion in video mode. It was just horrible. Everything looked concaved and just really, really weird. If, for example, if I'm in this room, the table would have looked completely rounded, which was just unusable. Now I made a video comparing my GH5 standard versus the S and it was there was a huge difference in the perspective it just wasn't even close you do get a wider field of view with the S but I've never had that problem before so the easy fix for this is to just set the camera to cinema 4k where the black bars come at the top and bottom and then set it back and it'll be fine I don't know what this bug is or how it started but it definitely happened with this firmware upgrade process for me on both of my GH5S cameras so Hopefully that's helpful. At the end of the day, what's my verdict on the autofocus performance on the GH5S? It's definitely improved in face detection autofocus mode. Now, again, if you're gonna be doing any stationary talking headshots, it will work fine in those situations. Just turn the sensitivity and speed down for the best results. Again, though, one area mode where you set a box up over your subject is by far the best. And if you're a solo shooter, I encourage you to use that over face detection, but this will get you through in a pinch. Just know though, if you leave it set to default, you're gonna get a lot of background pulsing, which is a little bit disappointing given that the S5 has fixed that pulsing issue. So if they can get this camera and all micro four thirds Panasonic cameras up to the standard of the GH5, or the Panasonic S5, I should say, then the autofocus will be far more reliable. I trust this far more than anything else when it comes to face detection, at least from Panasonic. And if I really need reliable autofocus performance, I take my Olympus because that's infallible. <laughs> it's really, really good. So yeah, just keep that in mind. I think this is better. Again, one area mode will get you out of the best situations and talking headshots like this, I'm using it right now and it seems to be working really well. Let's just show you how slow it will transition over, which I really like. My shirt isn't pulsing or doing anything in the background, which is cool. And as I bring it back, it should hopefully go back to my face, which it has. So you can get away with it, but it's not the best for outdoors when there's lots going on behind you, especially if you've got the default settings. I've done a full guide on what I think are the best settings. I still stand by that as of this firmware upgrade. Links to that will be up here. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.